Now, 3.9 versus 4G. There is a lot of confusion. And actually, confusion is now going away a little bit. But in 2009, basically, nobody was sure what Bimax is, what generation it is. So, let me tell you some stories here. At that time, there was basically, I mean, Bimax people said, okay, so it, uh, ITU said, okay, we will have the fourth generation that will have these qualities. It will have 100 megabits and 1 gigabit per second to the user. Right? And Bimax did not meet it. <coughs> so, they said, well, you cannot be 4G. And the second problem was that there was no spectrum. Every country gives a spectrum and they say, okay, this spectrum is for 2G, this spectrum is for 3G and so on and so forth, right? So, what does Bimax do? I mean, there, there is no spectrum for 4G and there is no spectrum for Bimax. So, they said, okay, we are 3G. So, they downgraded themselves to 3G. So, I remember going to a meeting where they said, Bimax is 3G, period. So, now you got the spectrum. <laughs> you go to any country, sir, I am deploying 3G. You got the spectrum. And, and then, of course, they are not 4G and everybody wants 4G. So, some companies started, and 3G is already there, I mean, which is much slower, right? So, they started selling Bimax as 4G. When LTE came, they were exactly same speed as Bimax, same technology, same thing. So, they called themselves as, they started calling themselves as 4G. But they were not 4G. So, then people said, no, no, they are 3.9G. Which is 4G, but not quite. And so the competition went on at ITU. ITU had put a whole set of requirements. If you meet these 10 requirements, then you have 4G. So this, they designed the next generation of their technology. Bimax designed Bimax 2. LTE designed LTE Advanced. And this is after my time. So I stopped going to Bimax in 2009. So between 2009 and 2000 whatever now, um, maybe four years after that, 2013, they developed Bimax 2 which is 4G, which met all the requirements. Similarly, LTE developed LTE Advanced, which met all the requirements. So, LTE Advanced is 4G. Now, since LTE Advanced is all there everywhere, so now, basically, when you see a symbol 4G, you cannot be sure whether it is LTE or LTE Advanced. That's the thing. And, and somebody said that sometimes they say LTE. So, they just don't, they want to be clear that this is, you, you think about whatever G you want to call it, it is there, this is LTE. Right? But really the 4G by definition of ITU is LTE. Yeah, so then, then you are not sure what you are getting. You could be getting LTE. Right? Or you could be getting LTE advanced. So, so there is a lot of confusion there. And Bimax forum is 3G and 3.9G as well. Right? Actually it is 3.9G to be sure. If there was a spectrum, they would never call themselves 3G. Alright? Alright? So, these are near 4G technologies. Going to GSM. GSM is a French name. And the French name was System Mobile, I remember. I think G was for, um, what is the global, I mean, I don't know what they call global in French. So, something like that, okay. So, basically, that is how the, it was named. And the reason it was French was, this is another interesting story. You won't find this in books. Is because ITU is UNO and they only recognize few languages English, Spanish, French, something, something, I forget, you know, whatever languages, right? And so, so most of the European work was done in French, not in other languages, French. And so this is GSM, it actually, you know, came through that at sea train to ITU. But anyway, so now it is called G Global System for Mobile Communication. Global System for Mobile Communication stands for GSM. It is implemented in 90% of the cell phones worldwide, everywhere. And it is a 90-90 technology. So it is 25 years old, but it's still surviving. It is still there in your phone. If you have a phone without GSM, it doesn't go much anywhere, right? And it runs at every frequency that is available, 850 megahertz, 900 megahertz, 1800 megahertz, 1900 megahertz, and this is simply because every country gave a different frequency when the time came to give a frequency, right? I think 1800 is US, 1900 is UK, 900 is probably original, 
and so on and so forth, 850 is some other country. So quad band, if you really want to go worldwide, you have to buy it. and otherwise you will find that your phone doesn't work in some countries. The biggest invention in GSM and really a good invention was that they separated the phone from previous to that, previous to that in the United States even up until you know very few years ago, when you got a phone from the phone company that was your phone, it was your name was in the hardware right there, okay. If I gave it to you, it is my phone you are using and I am being built for it. So the phone and the users were like this, the GSM people said no phone and the user should be separate. So they put the user in a SIM card that we call the card, right? SIM card is subscriber identity module. So that is where the whole thing about the subscriber is in that little card. If I take that card and put it into this phone, that becomes my phone. Okay, take this card and put it into that phone, that becomes my phone. You see, what a what convenient thing. We don't realize this today, but this was not the system in the United States. This was in Europe. In the United States, we got the phone from the phone company and that was my phone. Okay, there was no SIM card. And so now it basically they, everybody realized that this is a good system, so now it is everywhere. Yeah. Nowadays they have integrated SIM card? In the phone? Yeah. No, no, locked phone, you mean. No, no, they won't integrate into this. That, that will not work. I mean, my Apple and Samsung now, they have like integrated SIM card inside the phone and you just choose your camera, that's it. Then you... Okay, I, I will talk about that later. I haven't heard about that and the thing is that would be going in the wrong direction. I think it is very convenient to have a SIM card and throw away the phone. No, I mean, you could switch it by moving the, the next phone and just subscribe, just enter your reason. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So the basically, so I mean, it's quite possible that the SIM has gone into the cloud or something. So, so the idea is all the subscriber information is in that card. Okay, your name, your phone number, you know, company, everything is in that SIM card. The phone it will work with any SIM and, the, and so you can buy any phone. And so that was the thing, SIM card. Now, FDMA, this was the generation one. First generation was FDMA, so every frequency, once you are given that frequency channel number 433, that was your frequency for as long as you kept the phone up. And so that means we cannot use too many users. I mean, you know, if there are 433 channels, means there are 433 users. So they said, no, that's not good. Let's give a piece at a time. So you, you do a slot at this stuff. Time. So this is TDMA. On each channel, the user is given a slot. So now on the same four channels, I can use up to, you see, 32 users. And of course, we will repeat. After eight users, we will repeat again. So U1, U2, U3, U8, and then U1, U2, U3, U8. And so in that little time, you get, because it is digital, that's the good thing. Because in the analog, you cannot do that. In the analog, the waveform has to be sent. And the waveform is always this long, you know, right? With digital, we can compress it, all right, send it at a higher speed or whatever, and then send it. So, so basically, the this slot is containing the voice that the user once said, no, actually this slot is containing the voice that the user once said in this whole time period, right? In the whole time period, whatever you said, you get into digital a small packet and send it over, right? So we can, we can support lot many more users now, eight times more users, just to be exact. And then this is the system that they designed. So the user equipment, your phone is called mobile equipment, ME, it has a SIM card, subscriber identity module. Your phone talks to the radio, to the radio tower, which is called the base transceiver station, BTS, which is connected by a wire to base station controller called BSC. All the base station controllers are connected to a central office called Mobile Services Switching Center, MSC. In the MSC, they have several other things including home location register HLR, visitor location register VLR, and equipment identity register EIR and authentication center AUC. And then they are connected, that is connected with a very high speed line 
to the public switched telephone network to the wired network all right now all these acronyms you got to remember them okay because we are going to use them left and right left and right sim now you know we don't have to just tell you what sim is right same thing is me bts bsc msc hlr vlr all of these now so this is basically what they did was they trans they put the radio part here so this is the base transceiver station and most of the other logic here so this is the bsc and one controller can control many stations many towers right and many controllers can be controlled from the central place now what is home actually this is all in the next slide i so i'm going to go to the next slide one bts per cell one bsc can control multiple bsss and allocate radio channels among bts so then it can tell the in the tower what to do with what frequency what user all that map that you saw can come from bts manages the call hand ask what mean the bts is when you go from one tower to the next tower this controller knows that's happening and control handset power levels that's another thing is that if you are near the tower you don't want to blast one watt when you are far away from the tower you want to send one one watt as you come closer and closer you send less and less otherwise what will happen is the receiver will be overwhelmed by your big sound and it will not hear other users understand so people who are asking question from far away they have to speak louder but people who are asking question from close they have to speak slower so that i can hear because they are all talking at the same time right so that's the reason so there is a very good power control depending upon the user location the power level changes it is not it is one done same thing for the transmission same thing for reception so the transmitter the base station they change the power and then they ask you to change your power okay all right let's see so all of this is done from the bts uh, b b uh, yeah from the controller bsc and the mobile switching system connects to the P pstn so that's another acronym we will use pstn public switch telephone network which means the wired net and switches calls but mean the bscs provides mobile registration location authentication so what are these things so basically you have registered with atnt or and c has registered with mobile with, with at mobile so all of that information basically if you are registered with atnt and if this is atnt is a station then it will say okay all right this guy is okay let him make a call if you are not registered with atnt the atnt msc will say no this is not okay they are not our partner they have known a very roaming agreement with us not okay <laughs> right so all that information is there in msc now how does msc know msc keeps a home location register home location register is a registry of all people who are in st louis and registered with atnt or t mobile for that matter into t mobile ms hlr and so their information is all there they have signed up for um, video service they have signed up for you know this that whatever is all there in hlr but when you are visiting las vegas what happens there basically over there msc will call the msc over in st louis and say we have a st louis guy here what is he registered for can he make a phone call can he watch, watch the video so there is a vlr visitor location register so hlr is your home and vlr is all the people who are visiting st louis here or you know in, in in las vegas vlr would be all the people who are visiting las vegas right and so that information will be good for few days you know because they don't want to on every phone call you make they don't want to call st louis hlr and vlr clear what is authentication center can anybody guess trust center yeah this is where your certificate your everything is i mean basically is that so this is where they keep all the security stuff and your password or whatever is required to identify you and equipment identity register that's another interesting thing is that if a phone is stolen it is in that register <laughs> so that phone has that this phone is good phone this phone is stolen phone and so on and so forth so when you make a phone call 
that is checked here that okay this is a good form okay now all of these are functions again as I said before and can be put into one box so if you go to buy EIR I don't think you'll find one in the market yeah so how does how does a phone Get into the oh, you so there is a e whatever number they, they, when you were you know there's a number on the phone, right? So when you when you make a phone call, that number is transmitted along with your same information. Yeah, I guess I guess how does how does a phone get registered and stolen? Yeah, so the register gets stolen when you report it. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, when you report the stolen, then then it gets registered. Previously, I think it was very easy because previously you had every phone was phone company's phone and it was written in your name. Well, I mean, it was pre SIM days. But anyway, similar technologies applied to the US system, but they were not so clear about the SIM and other business. But now, you know, with this, I think this is becoming universal. All right. So, yeah, go ahead. Question. How would the embassy in Vegas know that I'm from St. Louis? Oh, your phone will tell them. Okay. See, the thing is, when your SIM card will have that information that this is Achinta Kumar from St. Louis and you know customer numbers and so and um, so some information is already there right so your SIM is registered right and so that number the SIM number itself will somehow tell them that you are from St. Louis but if, unless they can find where to charge they won't let you do anything <laughs> So believe it or not, by the time you get the dial tone, by the time you press something and dial tone, all this has been done. You won't get a dial tone until until you have been authenticated and that your account is in good shape. If you didn't pay the bill for 10 months, you cannot make a call from Las Vegas. You know. <laughs> all right, home location, visitor location, EIR, authentication center. This is really painful. Oh, this is the number you were talking about, the phone number, I-E-I-M-E-I -E -E number. That is the International Mobile Equipment Identity Number. That is like your MAC address. It is much bigger than MAC address, but that's a big number, right? That every phone has a unique number.